Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making a card for the newest There's a Stamp for That challenge. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the new challenge is and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. As inspiration for today's card, I will be using the latest There is a Stamp for That Challenge. Now I have mentioned this challenge before, but if you haven't heard of it, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. There is a Stamp for That is a Facebook challenge group started by my friend Danny, and every two weeks she puts out a challenge. She usually gives you two or three options, so you have something in your stash that you can create using those as inspiration. And even though the name of the group is There's a Stamp for That, it is open to all kinds of crafters. We have people that have been doing cards, of course. We also have people who are creating t-shirts, mixed media pages. It's very fun to see all of the different ways people are inspired by the challenges. If you're interested in finding out more about the group and possibly joining, I will have a link in the description box below. The latest challenge, which is challenge number two, it is summer or slimline cards. And I decided to go ahead and do a summer slimline card. You can always use one of the ideas or both of them. That is totally up to you. I'll tell you now a little bit about the products that I'm going to use. And if I add anything later, I will be sure to mention it. Now, if when I go to the voiceover during the process, I fail to answer a question or I leave you with one, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my stamp set today, I will be using Sunny Fun from Stampin' Up. My sister gifted this to me a while ago and it was perfect for this summer card. I will be stamping with Versamark ink and using detail silver embossing powder for my image. That just helps me when I go to color it, stay within the lines. Speaking of coloring, I will be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers for the images today. And I got out 202 Peach Pink, number 50 Yellow, number 47 May Green, number 37 Cornflower Blue, number 65 mid brown and then my clear colorless blender i also got out a piece of white cardstock for my card base and because i'm coloring with the zig markers i find they work best on strathmore bristol smooth so i got out just a scrap of that and this will be a strip that goes down the center of the card this is two inches tall by eight and a half inches long for my pattern papers on today's card, this was a great way to use some of those pages in my paper pads that are meant more for scrapbooking because I will just be using the sides of these as strips to decorate the card. So I got out both of these pieces of paper from a hop by pad from Michaels called Spring and Hop. Let's get crafty. To get started, I'm going to make my slimline card base. I cut a sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch cardstock down to 7 inches and then I turn it and fold it so my finished card size is 8.5 inches wide by 3.5 inches tall. Next, I brought in my pattern paper and I cut one inch off the top and bottom of both pattern paper pieces. Once I had cut those one inch strips, I then turned those around and I cut those so they were eight and a half inches wide. Now it's time to do the stamping. I prepare my cardstock with my embossing buddy so the embossing powder only sticks to where I want it. Then I ink up my stamp and place it so just a little bit of the right edge of the stamp is hanging off the right side. 
Once I have that stamped, I pull in my detail silver embossing powder, pour that on top, knock off the excess, and then heat set that with my heat gun. Now, the reason that I went with silver on this instead of my regular black embossing powder when I use my Zig Clean color markers is because I thought the silver went a little bit better with the pattern papers. I thought the black embossing powder might be too stark. You'll see there that before I brought back in my heat tool, I did have to wipe off some of the powder with a little paintbrush. I then stamped and heat embossed one final ice cream cone and my stamped strip was all ready. Originally my plan was to color all of these little images on the card, but after stamping I realized that that was going to be too many to color. So I brought in a scrap of yellow cardstock and my Art Impressions steel circle dies. Because I wanted a frame, I went ahead and left all of those dies tied together and ran this through my die cutter. Then I was able to select which size frame I wanted so I could move on to the coloring. Once I knew exactly where my frame would go, I could start coloring in the ice creams that would be included in that area. The first marker I used was the brown, and I started by adding just a little to the left of each cone and each popsicle stick, and then I brought in my colorless blender and blended that out to the right. You'll notice that I do often wipe off my colorless blender. That is just so I get shading instead of a solid colored image that takes some of that ink off there that it has accumulated. I wanted the colors of my ice creams to follow the order of the colors in my pattern paper. So I brought in a scrap and I'm gonna start with the pink. This coloring is pretty much the same. I color in the left section of my ice cream cone, wiping off my blender when I need to. When I thought I had a nice blend, I then came back in with my pink marker and added some accents on there just for some depth. Next up was yellow for the popsicle and I did the same thing, shading the left half, bringing in my blender, and then adding some yellow dots back in there. Next, I grabbed out the cornflower blue, and because this popsicle was in two parts, I did shade in two areas on the popsicle before I did the blending. A green was needed for the next popsicle, and this is kind of in striped sections like that first ice cream cone, so I just colored in each of those on the left side and blended it out. I then went back in with my green marker and added just a little shadow under each of the lines. Now you'll see here that I brought in the colorless blender and I'm actually outside of the popsicle. That was because I got a little bit of green outside, but all I had to do was keep picking up that green with my colorless blender and it worked like magic. And finally, I brought back in that pink marker and colored the ice cream cone to the right. And now that I'm voicing this over, I realize that first pink one was probably a snow cone. And now it was time to start putting my card together. The first thing I did was add adhesive to the stripe pattern papers and place one on the top and bottom. And then because I knew that I would want to cover up that yellow border, I held my image up to that to try to figure out how wide my pink border would be. Once I had that figured out, I added adhesive to the back of my colored piece and then I added both of the pink strips. This then got adhered flat down onto my card front so there was just a little striped border still showing on the top and bottom. To adhere my frame around the spotlight area of my colored image, I got out my art glitter glue, added adhesive to the back, and then I set that aside to dry for about five minutes. While the glue was drying, I got out my sentiment stamp as well as my ink and silver embossing powder, and I stamped and embossed the sentiment on that scrap of yellow cardstock that I used to die cut my circles. The sentiment on this card says, that was so cool of you. 
thanks. I thought that went well with the little icy treats. Once that was all done, I pulled in my little Fiskars guillotine trimmer and I cut the cinnamon out so there was an even border at the top and bottom. By that time, my adhesive was dry, so I tried to figure out how much I would need to cut off my sentiment. I snipped that off, and then I snipped off some excess on the left, and I hand cut a little fishtail. Once that was done, I got back out that art glitter glue, added adhesive to the back, and slipped it in under the frame. As with most of my cards, I don't think they're complete until there's a little bling. I brought in some blue and green gems. Now the reason that I chose only the blue and green was the yellow was already represented with the circle frame and the sentiment, and there were two pink icy items already colored. So I placed two blue gems and one green gem in a triangle around that focal point. And here's a look at the final card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my card for the latest There's a Stamp for That challenge. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget I have the challenge Facebook page linked below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.